you're learning how to visualize highlight, shade, and shadow as it relates to three-dimensional objects. Your handout is an 11 by 17 of this uh, niche of or niche of vases. I've placed a piece of tracing paper over this so that for the demonstration, you can see how I'm using the contour of the vase and its lines as an underdrawing. Uh, it's a little harder to work on tracing paper. Um, if you are going to use tracing paper instead of marker paper to do this assignment, um, you're gonna have to use kind of the darker end of your markers because I don't know, markers one through three or 10% through 30% really don't show up on marker paper. So my markers have arrived. This is the 12 set. And I'm gonna go ahead and use, we have some black. This is cool gray 10. You won't see this on uh, marker paper, or I mean on tracy paper, but if you're using marker paper, that's fine. Um, I don't even think you'll see 20% on this paper, so I won't use that for today's exercise. Here's 30. I'll just put 40 to the side just to make things easier for me. Here's 50. I'll put the 60 to the side and 70 and a 90 and that should be enough for today's uh, exercise so if you're using marker paper and i just did a, a small printout of some vases on the marker paper um, you can start with lighter markers so when you're applying marker to mark uh, markers to marker paper, you're going to work from light to dark. So for example, in this exercise, if you see in this handout, you can see that the light source is coming this way and leaving shadows to the left. So I want to leave a nice highlight here on the vase, but then I can go in. This is 10. And I can add 20 and then I can even go in with some 30 if I want and if I want to blend then you blend with the lighter color so if I wanted to blend this 30 back into the 20 I'm using the 10 and I'm blending how about a 50 So now I could add some 50 marker in. Where I want some nice depth. And then I can blend, if you like the blended look and you don't wanna see marks, then you can blend back in with a lighter color. This is a 30. And then I can blend back in with a 10. Or if you, if you have your blender, you can also use your blender. So in this drawing, you should see that I was moving from light to dark. That, that's how you'll want to work on your under drawing as well. And then when you're all done, you'll either come back with pencil or with pen and you'll define some of those nice edges. So here's, this is where you're bringing back in what you've learned with line. And if you wanted to, this is where you can go ahead and add a bit of details indicating some type of pattern.
So that's what a what your vase might look like finished on marker paper. So what would help um, when you get your new set of markers is you notice I was struggling a little bit like, okay, you know, is this a 70? Here's the 90, 30. There's 10 to blend and 20. So what helps me is, again, this, this thicker band is indicating your um, chiseled side of your markers and then this smaller band is indicating the fine point. It helps me if I put like 20 here, 30, 70, 90. So the bands go from light to dark and that's kind of helpful, uh, but I do like to put the number on the band and that way that helps me out. So starting from light to dark. We talked about in class that the light source is coming from here and hitting a hot spot about here on your vases, here on the front of the bowl and at behind the bowl. So you wanna keep that nice white hot spot and you're gonna start by working light to dark. And so I'm gonna just start with 20 and keeping that light spot. I'm going to follow while I'm placing my markers on the vase. Notice that I'm following the contour lines. So I'm not tracing the contour lines. I'm just using those as I place markers on the drawing. I'm going to do it darker now. Build up. Build up. If you don't want to see marker harsh lines, then let's say you you came in with a 30, then you can soften again and blend with the lighter color below it. So if I just added 30, then I just softened with 20. Now I'm going to add a 40 or 50. I'm going to get a little darker here. Add that depth where I need to add my depth. If you don't like marks, again, if you want to blend, then go in with the softer color and blend the lighter color below it. So the background color, I'm gonna do a 60 or a 70 for the background color. Uh, let's just do 70 so you can see it. For the background color, you can use a straight edge or you can just kind of you know, once again, practice drawing your lines vertical. So that back paneling is straight, right? It's like a flat wall. So you're gonna apply your marks nice and even and vertically. So that's just a little different than how you were placing your markers right here, right? Following the contour of the base. I just added that dark edge because I was having trouble seeing the edge of the, of the base. All right, so if you want to use a straight edge, you're going to put the marker in your hand and this is where maybe if, you want, if you're doing this for the first time, maybe you just wanna use that nice cardboard cutout that I gave you. Um, you're gonna to wanna to put the flat 
broad nose edge of the marker and pull down. What you don't want to do is press your marker into the straight edge. If you press this in, you're gonna actually break the tip of your marker and you're gonna have an indentation there. So you're just using this almost as a guide. Okay, so you could pull away. So what this should start looking like is a nice dark background color. And maybe this, this is a 70, just so you know, maybe this is a little too dark. I don't know, I kind of like it, especially if this was a cabinet of white vases. So this is freehand. So on tracing paper, you're gonna get this uh, puddled effect. I call it puddling, where you end. So if you don't like that, you can pull your marker off the page and then crop your design, your drawing. Um, but it is just, you know, just kind of a, a natural occurrence. And I don't know, to me, it adds character. So I'm pulling up so that my puddling is up there on the top. So this is what the design is looking like so far. So um, in my opinion, there's too much contrast from the background to the vases. I feel like I need to add a bit more depth to the vases. And you can't do this too many times um, or your, your paper's just gonna get too saturated. But I'm just gonna finish this off. So I'm just making this darker. Again, if you don't like that, that harsh edge, then go back in and blend it. Maybe add a little bit of so this is 40. And my, my, my paper's um, probably taking all the ink that it can. So in this example, I'll go ahead and use a Sharpie now. So If you're having trouble, I'm just doing this for you, but I could easily just pull out and use my underdrawing.
really know if I love how it's turning out, but. That's okay, because why? Because we're just practicing. So don't notice that for like the flowers and the vines, I'm just doing some of those Y and U shapes. I'm not getting too literal, making the perfect flower. I'm just making the suggestions of vines and flowers. going very quickly now just so I can get this kind of done trying again to keep these videos like 20 minutes So I'm embracing the messy look for this one. If you want more of a controlled drawing, then go ahead and start with some marker on marker paper. blend. So if you, again, if you like more of a controlled look, blend, blend, blend. Right there. Blend. Use some finer pe pens. I just used one big fat Sharpie so that you can see for a demonstration, but you can also come through fuzzy edge. Blend it. You know, something definitely softer looking. Completely up to you. can use all pencil, uh, but let me just tell you, it does help for time to at least put a little bit of marker down for shade and shadowing. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It looks like the sun is coming into my window and that you will enjoy exploring the different forms of the vases.